What's up guys, Houndish here, and today I wanted to jump in with a guide to Gambit, how the game mode works, what you need to know about Gambit, and the Gambit demo coming to Destiny 2 this weekend, as well as some strategies and things to think about when you play Gambit in order to give you the best possible chances of success. So this is going to be an interesting one. Gambit is one of those game modes that has a lot of moving parts. It has more mechanics inside of it than what we'd see in a typical PvP mode or even many other PvE modes. And so it's one of those games where you can just kind of play it, have a little bit of fun. You don't have to pay a ton of attention to mechanics if you want a fairly casual game, but at the same time, on the upper end, if you really want to dominate in Gambit, there are a lot of mechanics to know about and a lot of different ways that you can approach the game and give yourself an advantage. So we're going to try and break it all down in this video. As always, if you guys enjoy it, a like below is very much appreciated. If you're new around here, be sure to hit subscribe to see a lot more D2 Forsaken content. Also, a quick shout out to my partners over at Gamerlink. They have a fantastic LFG and clan app on Android and iOS. Destiny 2 is featured on the app, so if you're looking for some folks to jump in and play Gambit with, it might be worth checking out Gamerlink. Let's try and light up their LFG with a bunch of Gambit posts later on today. So first up, of course, Destiny 2 will be getting a free trial of Gambit before Forsaken launches, and that is the September 1st Open Gambit Trial. It's going to last for 24 hours. It will start on September 1st's reset time, which is 10 a.m. PDT, 5 p.m. UTC, which is 6 p.m. in the UK. You are not required to own any expansions. You do require PlayStation or Xbox Live, of course. And as far as we know, this game mode will pop up in the director. They have confirmed that we shouldn't be getting any year two rewards dropped, but they have filled the loophole with stuff from year one. So it could be pretty interesting. Gambit will feature matchmaking as well. So you can go in with a team of four or a team of two, or indeed you can play solo. I should also mention this particular Gambit trial is not power enabled. And that is in the PvE aspect of the game. However, in the PvP side of Gambit, power level will affect the way that it plays out. So now let's get into some stuff about Gambit. I'm going to talk about some of the mechanics and then ways to tackle this game mode. So of course, when you fight off waves of enemies inside of Gambit, they will drop moats. These are the kind of white crystally type things you can see. And you need to collect these and bank them. And this is both going to enable you to score, which will give you opportunities to invade the enemy team, to spawn blockers for the enemy team, and ultimately spawn your primeval, which is the boss you need to defeat to actually win the round. And that's the incredibly basic description of Gambit. The important thing, like I said, is to remember that scoring is used to enable match progress and not to necessarily win the game. So the score itself won't win you the game, but you'll need to score in order to slow the enemy team down and to ultimately spawn your boss in, like I said. So let's talk about moats, scoring, and what it enables. So of course, you defeat enemies to pick up the moats. Guardians can carry 15 moats at a time, so once you've got 15 moats, that's the maximum you can carry, and you'll need to bank them. You can bank any amount of moats up to 15, but it's worth remembering, if you die, you're going to lose any moats that you're carrying, and lose that potential to score. When you deposit 5 moats at a time in your arena to the bank in the middle of the map right here, will actually spawn a small blocker on the enemy team's side. And what blockers do is essentially they lock the enemy team's bank down so they can't score until they take out the blocker. Blockers aren't like huge bosses, they're just kind of tanky enemies. But if you score 10 moats at a time, you will spawn a medium blocker and 15 moats for a large blocker on the enemy team. So this is actually going to slow down their progress quite a bit. On top of this though, once you bank 25 moats or 50 total moats, you will enable the portal to open up. And this is where one member of your team will get the opportunity to jump through and invade the enemy team. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. But if you look at the scoring bar at the top of the screen, there is the grayed out bar. What this shows is the potential score that you could score with the moats currently being carried by the players on your team so it's your potential vaulted score and the colored bar shows the actual number of modes that you have banked. You'll also spawn at the final boss that you need to defeat by actually scoring modes as well so once your team has 75 modes in the bank in a single round that's when you'll get the opportunity to spawn the primeval which is ultimately the road to one of the teams winning the game once that primeval gets taken out. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment but there is also the invading element of Gambit. So as as I mentioned before, when you deposit 25 moats or 50 moats as a team, you're going to open up the portal, which will let one of your team members to actually go through, invade the enemy team as they attempt to score as well. When you invade, you'll have 30 seconds to actually go into the enemy arena. So after 30 seconds, you're going to be taken back out 
or indeed if the enemy team kill you, you'll respawn back in your own arena. However, once you get to the primeval phase, so once a team scores 75 motes, that team's portal will open indefinitely for the remainder of the match or until the primeval is actually taken out and you'll have multiple opportunities to invade. Couple of quick things about invading. If you're an invading player, you're gonna be spawned in a random location in the enemy arena when you actually go through the portal. You'll be given an overshield, so you're actually quite a bit stronger than you normally would be in a PvP match, for example. And obviously you can use the heavy ammo you've got, you can use your primary weapons to take out enemies on the other team. Don't worry about the PvE enemies when you invade, they aren't actually going to attack you, they're allied with you interestingly enough. So all you need to focus on is killing enemy players. And obviously what this is going to do is disrupt the enemy team, disrupt their ability to score, disrupt their ability to take out the blockers, or indeed kill their boss. But bear in mind, this works two ways, so don't get too comfortable in your own arena, bear in mind you're going to be invaded as well. So now we've got invasion out of the way, I am going to talk tactics and things like that in a moment, but the final set of mechanics to talk about would be the primeval mechanics, the boss that you spawn in. So once you've scored 75 motes, put them in the bank, your primeval is going to spawn, you're going to have to kill this guy to win the round, so now you are in a race against the enemy team. You're essentially always in a race against the enemy team, but there's a few things to think about. So you will have a buff once your primeval is in called the primeval slayer buff. The longer that you actually have that, the longer your boss is alive, the more damage you're gonna be able to do to them. So absolutely, you're gonna to wanna to bring some pretty powerful stuff in terms of DPS. I think it's definitely worth trying to have a couple of players on your team who are capable of very solid damage. Obviously, a player more focused to PvP invasion. At the upper end, you definitely wanna spec your team out for this game mode. But either way, once you kill that primeval, you're going to win the round. We should mention though, that if you're defeated by an invader while your primeval is out if anyone on your team goes down to an invader this will give the primeval more health again so they're actually going to get health back if enemy invaders take your team out. And so there are a lot of mechanics going on right here. And really, I wanted to break down some top tips, some things to think about when you play Gambit. So when you go into a game, definitely you want to bank aggressively at the start of the game to try and get ahead. And most importantly, you want to spawn blockers onto the enemy side. Blockers actually stack up. So of course, like we mentioned, you can spawn a different type of blocker by banking five, 10 or 15 moats. But these actually stack, so if you vault enough modes quickly enough at the beginning, you're actually going to spawn a series of blockers which spawn in a row on the other side. So scoring very quickly and in high amounts is very important at the beginning of the game, but definitely try and score 5, 10 or 15 at a time to make those blockers as obnoxious as possible. And of course, during this time, you're going to have increased your team's score, getting closer to that opportunity for the primeval to spawn. But on top of this, you're gonna get the portal opened up at 25 and 50 modes. Like I said, before you actually invade, definitely try and have everyone on your team score as aggressively as possible, if you can send a bunch of blockers to the enemy team in the first couple of minutes and then attempt to invade soon afterwards, you're essentially going to be invading a team of players who are desperately trying to take out these blockers. They're going to be more preoccupied and relatively easy targets for invasion. Quick tip for invasion in general, obviously try to be stealthy for as long as possible. If you can get a couple of kills without the team really being aware where you are, then obviously that's going to work to your advantage because despite the buffs and everything like that that you've got, if a full team of folks are kind of team shooting you, you're gonna go down immensely quickly. So the stealthy element is definitely important. Try and get an angle where you can take out, you know, one player or two players, get some good flanks on. Even if you can kill a couple of players, that's gonna be much more effective than you, you know, going down before you can get any kills. I would also say try to save supers as well as heavy for invasions until later in the match. And I'll speak about why in just a moment. But when it comes to primevals, when you have your boss spawn in, of course you want to get this guy taken down as quickly as possible. Now because of the way the buff works, I'd actually recommend that you don't use your heavy or supers too early. So when the primeval is first summoned, try to do as much damage as you can with primaries, 
grenades, maybe a little bit of heavy, just to get that initial kind of chunk of health off the boss. Because of course, the longer you have the primeval buff, the more damage it will allow you to do. So if you can use primaries and things like that to do the first set of damage and then actually use supers and all of your heavy other damage buffs, once that primeval starts to become more vulnerable, then you're probably going to be much more efficient in terms of damage output on that enemy. Main thing to remember, primeval becomes easier to kill over time. So save your biggest damage for a little bit later on because it's essentially going to become even bigger damage, if that makes sense. Now, invasions, while primevals are up, are very important. There is actually a filthy primeval invasion tactic right here. So when you kill an enemy player, it will heal the primeval in their arena. Of course, that works both ways. So if you're killing your primeval, the last thing you want to happen is an invader to start getting kills on your team. So of course, if you have this opportunity yourself, it's gonna be very efficient. So if possible, try to let the enemy team do a little damage to their primeval before you actually invade for the kill. The drifter, the gambit vendor, will actually say when the enemy team's primeval has been spawned in. And so especially if you've already got some progress on your primeval boss, it means that you can try and stay in your arena, do a little bit more damage to your primeval, wait until you hear that the enemy primeval has spawned in, then go through after maybe 20 or 30 seconds to disrupt. And what you're going to be doing if you get kills on that team is actually giving their boss health back. So of course, the more damage that they've done to the boss already, the more detrimental you as an invader are going to be if you're getting kills on them at that point in time. Do just remember that the enemy team can do the exact same thing to you. So when the primeval spawns in, be extra careful not to let enemy invaders wipe your team. This is also why I recommended before that you hold on to things like supers especially for invasions when the enemy primeval is up. You know, if you've got a hammer titan or something like that, you jump through, maybe get a kill, then pop those hammers while the enemy team is fighting their primeval, you are really gonna mess them up. And so those are some of the core kind of tips that I would break down. Obviously, there's a lot to take in here. Gambit is actually a kind of complicated mode in terms of mechanics, or at least it can be if you want it to be, and there are a lot of opportunities for you to actually outscore, and like I said, be detrimental mental to the enemy team. That is the main purpose of invasions, for example. So I hope those tips help you guys out. One thing to mention about weapons. So we are going to be using our current weapons in the demo version. Of course, when Forsaken launches in just a few days time, we'll be able to use a bunch of new gear that we can get. But right now, just a few recommendations. Crimson, I think is going to be a pretty good weapon for this because of course you do get the healing effect and it can also auto reload. And when you're jumping into big groups of enemies to try and collect moats, get as many kills as possible, obviously getting your health back is gonna reduce the amount of time you need to waste actually regenerating health before you can collect moats. And indeed the time that you'd waste reloading the weapon. That's the main thing about Gambit. You are in a race, you are outscoring another team. So you want as many opportunities to get back into that fight, keep collecting and banking moats. And I think Crimson could be a pretty good primary weapon. Another one or another the series of weapons would be shotguns in general. Ikelos shotgun is going to be great. Of course, it has that DPS potential against primevals, but you can use it for adds and stuff in general. You can easily go for the Perfect Paradox, Hawthorne's Philford shotgun, or any other weapons like that that you'd enjoy. Shotguns are in general great for these close range PvE enemies, as well as invasions and DPS. For me, shotguns are the strongest and easiest to use special weapon type for Gambit. You're also going to need DPS, so if you're in a team, you can kind of intelligently set this up. Maybe Maybe you have some folks with something like the spindle, of course tractor cannon with the buff, maybe some good shotguns there as well. Also rockets in general, especially anything with tracking. We don't have too many good tracking rockets right now, but they're generally going to be very solid in Gambit. And they're especially easy to use for invasions because there is a lot of heavy ammo around. Those are just a few, you know, very general shouts as far as weapons go. Of course, there's plenty of stuff you can use right now. And I'd say in the demo version, it's definitely worth experimenting as much as possible. But guys, that would be my breakdown for Gambit, the basics of the game mode, some things to think about in terms of tactics. Of course, we're going to get more time with Gambit over the next few weeks, so more things will kind of develop. I'm sure we'll see some interesting strategies and stuff like that, but hopefully this will be good as we go in with the demo and the first couple of weeks of Gambit. So if you have enjoyed the video, a like below is very much appreciated. Let us know in the comment section any top tips that you have any things that you found that work really well in Gambit that might help other folks out, that would be super appreciated. But if you're new around 
here. Be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see a lot more Destiny 2 content. For now though, I very much appreciate you guys tuning in, and whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.